you're at the right place in the right time serving the right God right now. I'm so excited that you have tuned in and we welcome you to another edition of Hope Today. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert alongside with Pastor Amy Schaefer. So good to be with you today. Great to be with you, yes. Jay Gilbert. And I'm so great to be with you and our guest today, Lindsay Roberts. She has written a new book, Discover Your True Strength, to help you on the journey of the rest of your life. She hopes and prays that this book will position you for fulfillment and success by helping you realize that in Christ, you are stronger and more powerful than you may think. And as you come to recognize and understand that strength that is in you, you can live each day to the fullest, doing what you love and what you are called to do. <clears throat> you know, Jay, whenever my husband and I moved to Pittsburgh, uh, my dad told me, and I'll never forget this, Amy, he said, you can't have the backbone of a cotton string. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to have a backbone of steel. Come on. Come on. And I'm thinking that's what we're talking about today. Yes. There is a deep inner strength in us that we're going to need in these times and these days, you know, because life happens to all of us. Well, y'all need to get your backbone today. And listen, <laughs> let me tell you this. Let everybody know. Send out a quick text real quick. DVR it because this is one of God's generals. You know, yes. we have a lot of great guests mm -hmm. here on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television Network has been has right. so many different friends. But mm -hmm. to have a woman of God like this mm -hmm. share from years of experience, revelation and knowledge, tried, tested and proven, you are going to leave out of this broadcast with something supernatural. And if yeah. there's anybody that's had strength, right. my goodness, it's she has definitely had it. Well, think about it. Imagine yourself being the, you know, the daughter-in-law of Oral Roberts, being yeah. married to Richard Roberts, and just sitting and having eggs and breakfast with, <laughs> you know, Oral Roberts. And that's something. Every other morning wow. or whatever they did. I mean, that that is a, a powerful thing, and we are so yes. excited. So, you know, life is full of challenges, and it seems like the enemy is always trying to knock us down to rob us of our joy and strength. But what the enemy doesn't want you to know is that there is a certain kind of strength out there that is available to us all. And it begins with the one who created us. Television host, minister, and author Lindsay Roberts joins us now to share how we can discover our true strength and thrive in the midst of life's challenges. Lindsay, it is so great to have you with us on Hope Today. Thank you, thank you. I'm so honored and blessed to be here. Jay, good morning, good afternoon. Good morning. Good and morning. same to you, Amy. Thank you for allowing me this privilege. You guys are a lot of fun, so I'm <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> so tell us what it was like to have breakfast with the one and only Oral Roberts. Ah, no. <laughs> you know what, he's a character and he was a character from day one. And the odd thing was he was so insightful, but so spiritual. And what most people don't know is he was a rascal. He took great joy in throwing people off guard and being a comedian. And most people don't know that. And I had the privilege of seeing every side. I totally and completely honored and respected him as a man of God because, oh my gracious, to be able to sit. I think about this today. You, you know, when people ask you those funny, weird questions, like if you had one person you could spend five more minutes with, who would it be? It would be oral. I, it really would. Of course, the Lord, but I mean, living person in my life, it had been oral. And it's because five minutes with him was so full of the word of God when he was spiritual. Now it also could have been full of mischief when he was not. So we had the privilege of both. So he was a wonderful, wonderful human being. But I always called him a character because to me, he was kind of larger than life. He lived on another planet in so many ways. And his brain would create something and he would go from morning till night and he would say something really funny. I'll never forget it. It will go with me till I see him again in heaven. And he'd say, this is a matter of life and death. And, you know, for someone to say that, people would think, no, it's not. But to him, it was. People's salvation, people's healings, people's relationship with Jesus was always on the forefront of his mind. And that was life and death and eternity for him. And he meant it very, very much. So it was always fun to be with him. But at the same time, it was always very challenging because 
I didn't want to miss a word of what he was saying. I love that so much. You know, in our family, we are at the third generation of ORU graduates. So we're thank God for Oral and for what you and Richard have done in the kingdom. But now you have a new book out, Discovering Your True Strength. Have you really had to have some supernatural strength, Lindsay? You know, just being part of a family that is what I call recognizable. I'm not, I'm not, I was always what I called invisible and I was happy being there. I was that kid that always had to have a hundred on every test. And I poured all my efforts into a book because the book um, didn't like yell back or something like that. My opportunity to be inside a book allowed me the privilege of learning, which I absolutely loved, <clears throat> but it also created a quiet, peaceful environment that I loved with all my heart because I could, I could study at my pace. I could do things at my pace. And I loved that. So I was that invisible kid. But when I married Richard, I, I was at law school at ORU. And when I married Richard, um, I had no preparation, no idea, no, no understanding what it would mean. Someone told me um, Oral at that time was the fourth most recognizable man in the world. And I was like, ha, 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 oh, cool. It, no, it didn't, it, it didn't dawn on me because I didn't, even to this day, I don't really care about those numbers, those kind of things. And it was never a part of my world whatsoever. So I really didn't know the magnitude of it. And I learned very quickly, quickly. Some people will love you unconditionally. They'll love you with no reason. Other people will hate your guts mm -hmm. and you don't even know them and they don't know you. So it was a hard learning experience. The, the hardest I ever had now I'll, I'll remember it you know, with God's grace and mercy. And it's in the book. It's part of a challenge that I think all of us face when we hit a roadblock that we don't know what to do with. I had been, you know, when you marry someone like the Roberts, everybody wants you to have 60 kids and other people um, have some really nasty comments. I had several miscarriages, a child that lived a day and a half that I named Richard Oral. Okay, there right there was just absolute a playing field for the media. And uh, it was awful. And at my son's memorial service, I remember my father-in-law said, we have to announce this because it has, you know, people anticipated a birth. And he said, we have to deal with it or you'll be dealing it, with it here and there all the time and it will keep hitting you over and over. Let's just do it once and for all. So we did announce it and had a memorial service. Now I, I had had my son and then within 36 hours, he was in heaven. He had developed a breathing problem and, and after miscarriages and everything else, I was so excited and then came crashing down at my son's memorial service. Now I am fresh out of the hospital and I mean hours out of the hospital <clears throat> and a woman came up to me I'd never seen before and to my knowledge, never seen since and said, I prayed for God to kill that baby and God answered my prayers. Oh, wow. You can't be prepared for that. I don't care who you are, you know, maybe someone else is, but in my world, I was not prepared for that. And I was devastated to begin with. I was exceptionally hormonal from having a baby. I was exhausted. I was, I was just out of it. And lo and behold, I didn't have the wherewithal but I discovered God did. And he told me to go minister to her. And I'm like, no. I mean, I remember in my mind saying, no, no, you want to minister? To her? You minister to her. No. And the Lord said, go down and hug her neck. And I thought in my brain, did God just give me permission to wring her neck? And I thought, okay, that can't be what he meant. And finally I, I did. I walked, there was a stairs case thing. And I walked down, it was two or three little steps. And I walked down and I said, why on earth would you say something like that? You don't know me. And that woman, the floodgates opened. She was crying and apologizing. And, and I got the privilege of talking to her about Jesus. So how I did wasn't in my humanness. I know that I know my own strength in some ways, and that was not mine. And God gives us those opportunities to show him strong. And I've had opportunities like that 
pretty much all my life and especially being in the ministry and then especially on top of that being in a ministry that other people have heard about and want to take loving kindness to and pot shots to so you know it's really hard especially with kids growing up and and i i learned there is a supernatural strength inside all of us if we will give god the privilege of being strong in us through christ who gives us that strength when you share that story which is just so heartbreaking um you say many other situations, they're, they're strength stealers. They, they are stealing your strength. And we're all faced every day when we wake up with life, with family situations, financial situations, you know, career situations, and they can steal that joy or steal our strength. What have you found are some keys that can shift that narrative and that story to the joy of the Lord really is our strength? You know, I put strength stealers and strength builders for a reason. I think a lot of people will identify strength builders or strength stealers, but maybe not at the moment of, say, crisis or whatever. They don't think they can put them together. We can take everything that we have been through, and as God says, he promised to turn it for our good. It didn't say everything was good, but he could take it and turn it for our good, that he could use it in perhaps ways we thought impossible. And one of the strength builders that I've discovered is simple. It's just as simple as it can be. It's the Bible. And I know that it sounds very um, churchy, very spiritual, but I hope I'm churchy and spiritual enough for people to see that there are keys in the Bible that we can latch onto. And you don't have to go Genesis to Revelation. When I've been in tough situations, I might not even remember Genesis to Revelation. Maybe the you know trauma or whatever is is so big in front of me that it's it's difficult for me to take a hard look at that. And so I I immerse myself in the Word of God, even in little bites like the joy of the Lord is my strong is my strength. There's scripture peppered throughout the whole book, but I put three keys three key scriptures because I think that that's easy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you'll remember that, I don't have to lose my joy and it's not in my own strength. Second of all, be strong, here you go, in the Lord and the power of his might. I, I used to kind of, you know, that pride yourself on being strong. No, sometimes the devil will knock the stuffing clean out of you. When that happens, it's not about me and it's not about the devil and it's not about the situation. It's about the joy of the Lord. It's the power of his might. Mm -hmm. And then when you say I can do all things through Christ, that means I just get to hang on for the ride and he does the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. There's certain key scriptures that if we'll hold on to and really focus on them, I do believe in time of strength stealers, they'll pop into our head. They'll come to our mind. They'll come out our mouth. And our spirit man will have that opportunity to, you know, as I say, down flesh, I decrease so Christ in me increases. And honestly, it may just be one scripture, mm -hmm. one something that God has done for you. I think sometimes we're looking for that booming effect when that still small voice, if we'll listen, is saying, okay, I got this. You know, a lot of times in life, we hit certain things and everything that you're saying, I, we 100% believe, we know it to be true. But when you're in the heat of the battle, Lindsay, and things are difficult and hard and you don't feel the strength, mm -hmm. how do you practically tap into that supernatural strength? You know, there's, there's something that I really appreciate in my life. I was told, um, <clears throat> I thought I had like you can see a little scar there maybe or maybe not, but I, I thought I had strep throat. I had been in a building, an office building where all the people around me ended up with strep throat. And I was doing that weird thing of like, okay, this doesn't feel right. Maybe I've got strep throat. I'm not swallowing right. Went to the doctor and tested it, not strep throat. And he said, do this, this, and this. And in a matter of that quick, I was told I had stage four cancer. I had thyroid cancer. I didn't even know I had a problem. And in the, honestly, in the flash of a, uh, of a moment, 
I'm at, I, I've gone back home. I'm on the phone and I get a phone call that it isn't strep throat. I have stage four cancer. Wow. Mm. I had my knees buckle straight out from under me. I remember literally hitting the floor with my knees. But I'll tell you who was there. My daughters were there and my husband was there. They could have said a lot of things, but I surrounded myself with some body, some people that knew the word of God. And I believe that no matter what we're facing, we've got to have that little tiny, even if it's just two or three people, you've got to have that core that you can go to. Now, some people may be listening and say, I don't have that core. Okay, call, uh, uh, if there's a prayer number on your screen, call someone who will pray. Do something proactive to tell the devil no. You know, I used to say very simple, mm. no devil. Mm -hmm. That's been, I mean, I know it sounds like that's very trite, but I do believe that if I start with the words of my mouth, I, I think I, there's a couple of places in the book where I talk about the importance of our words. And if I can, out of my mouth, I'll be, I'll be real honest, out of my mouth wasn't, oh, praise the Lord, thus saith the Lord. When that happened out of my mouth was, I can dive bomb into fear, worry, panic. And I think I took a complete nosedive into worry and fear and panic. And I know the Bible, at least a good portion of it. But I took a dive into fear when I heard that. And instead of allowing that to take over, I had a choice and I wrote it in the book, Voices and Choices. You're going to hear things. It's going to happen. But then you have a conscious choice. Choose this day whom you'll serve. You have to say, all right, all right, I know that this is the fact. But what's the truth of the word of God? And I do believe we can say, my husband says this to me, I'm going to use a hand gesture because this is my Richard. He'll look at me and he'll say, Lindsay, down flesh. And he'll take his hands and he'll say, down flesh, down flesh. And you know, he's right. <laughs> my flesh has to take a back seat so that the spirit of God in me can come up. And that's not always easy. And, and I have a reminder at my house, which is, you know, everybody that sees it knows what it is. It's like a comedy in our house. My husband, after I'd been diagnosed with that, went to a toy store and he bought me a little yellow rubber duck. The kind you see a kid in the bathtub with, a little baby, a child <laughs> that's, you know, a little rubber duck. And he came to me with it and he said, Lindsay Roberts, you are not a sitting duck waiting for the other shoe to drop. You are the righteousness of God in Amen. Christ Jesus. Now expect a miracle. That word, expect a miracle, like bombarded my soul. Yeah. And if we'll get something like that, where we put ourselves a sticky note, put up a post-it, make a plaque. He also got me a plaque years ago that said, thou shalt not whine, W-H-I-N-E, <laughs> right? Plain. I prefer the yellow duck That's and good. you will see that in my house. The other one somehow made its way to the trash can. But, 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 you know, there are those reminders that we can remind ourselves. God's word is God's word. Even if it's just putting out, expect a miracle. Write it on a notebook, write it on a sticky tab, write it on, you know, on somewhere, even on your refrigerator, on a refrigerator magnet. Don't let the devil have your thoughts in your words combat that even if it's simple i expect a miracle then that's your beginning point amen that is so good expect a, i cannot wait to do that to my husband down <laughs> flesh i cannot wait to see his response <laughs> so tell him richard said so <laughs> um why is this particular message so important for women right now you know, I go back to my father-in-law. One day he called me and he said, come out. He was living in California. And he said, come out here. I've got a message for you. Well, that usually meant we were going to write a book. I wrote a lot of books with him. It meant it might have been a magazine article or a partner letter or just he wanted to work through a sermon and, and chat through something. And he was what I called the marathon man, the energizer bunny. <clears throat> I would get out there. And I would have been on a flight. My eyeballs were like this. And, you know, the whole, I, usually if I went out there, I tried to take my kids and Richard, we would all try and go out there to see 
Oral, we lovingly called him Andy. That's a whole nother story. But we would go out and he would sit down and he would always have a yellow notepad and a blue felt marker. This was back in the day when you didn't have a lot of um, cell phones to record. I didn't have a cell phone back years and years ago. <coughs> Pardon me. But he would always have stacks of notebooks. And I'm telling you, within the first day, we had written through all of them. The man was a machine. Wow when it came to the word of God. So that's what I was expecting. And then he looked at me and he said, this is not for me, for me, meaning him. He said, this is for you, Lindsay. And he took me to Luke 8 about women of substance. Mm. And I was overwhelmed because it's the parable of the sower. So your brain starts telling you, you know, it's sowing and reaping. It's great. I, that's what I was going to expect. And he said, no, he said, these were women of substance, Mary, Joanna, Susanna. They were named by name. Very few women in the Bible, very few people in the Bible are named by name. And he said, women are coming to the forefront. God is making sure they have their place. Sometimes they didn't take their place for whatever circumstances. Other times they were not allowed to take their place. He said, the time has come for women who have special unique gifts within them to come to the forefront strong and in the power of God's might. And women are important. They can minister to women in a way nobody can. They can minister to men in a way nobody can. They're nurturers, they're this, they're that. And he just started going. And he said, you watch me, the next great move in the earth will be women coming forward and ministering in ways that no one will think possible. And not every woman that comes forward will be someone you expect. He said, but get ready. And that's how the first book started. And then, of course, he talked about this hidden inner strength in women that God was bringing out. And that's how this book came about. Wow. This book is so important. It's so profound. And it is so for right now. Thank you, Lindsay Roberts, for being our guest today. Thank you for this incredible message of discovering your true strength, you know, when life hits, how we can have the joy of the Lord. We appreciate you and we are praying for all of the Roberts. Thank you, thank you so much, both you guys. I appreciate being here, that was lovely. <laughs> when we return in 60 seconds, we'll look at what the Word of God has to say about finding our strength. We'll be right back. The barriers that stand between you and a blessed life may feel insurmountable, but Dr. Robert Jeffers assures you they can be overcome. This month, when you give your most generous gift to Cornerstone Television, we'll send you Dr. Jeffers' new book, Invincible, Conquering the Mountains that Separate You from the Blessed Life. Offering biblical insight and practical tools, he explains how you can conquer the hindrances of doubt, guilt, anxiety, discouragement, fear, and bitterness through prayer and faith in a God whose strength can move mountains. Request your copy when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television. Your generosity will evangelize the lost, encourage believers, provide excellent Bible teaching, and so much more. Call us today and become invincible, conquering the mountains that separate you from the blessed life. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I have been so enjoying this program. And as always, we like to leave you with a scripture, Nehemiah 810, very familiar pastor of scripture. But apropos for this moment, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. You know, we heard uh, Lindsay talking mm -hmm. and I was just sharing this. I know this isn't really a ministry moment, but it is. Yeah. I think in this day and hour, we need to give more honor to the generals before us. Just listening to her talk, how nurturing it was. If I felt like I was back and I was 10, 11 years old, listening to a mm -hmm. parent instruct you and they just have you sucked in like a right. tractor beam and you're just taking in all of this. They have gone through so many different things, mm -hmm. beat so many enemies, cut off so many heads of Goliaths and we need to be able to hear from them. So hearing her talk about strength that has truly lived it has just been outstanding and it's been so nurturing to me. Well, knowing that there are huge targets for men and women that are at the forefront of ministry. I heard a great scripture in reference to generals and the scripture was in those days, there were giants in the land. Mm. 
not just like big, creepy, mean, ugly giants, but there are giants of the faith that are alive and well today. And we need to hear and listen and be teachable. They have something to say. They've been with the Lord. They have walked through hard times, yeah. walked through good times, seen a move of God in people's lives and in their own life. And we need to be sitting in the seat of a learner. Amen. Well, you know, I've heard it said before that the greatest teachers are simply profound but profoundly simple. You know, and as she was talking, she made something very, very profound that was simple. And she said, I, I asked her the question, how, are, how do you get this strength? What do you do in those practical moments? She goes, just begin to open your mouth. You know, a lot of time we're looking for these deep revelations and sometimes it's just doing the simple things. Open up your mouth, declare. She said, don't let the devil steal your thoughts or your words. You know, if we can just simply do that, right. anything can happen. If you take a look back in Genesis, the Bible says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. What did God start doing? He started talking right. and God said, yeah. let there be light. You know, our words, Pastor Amy, mm -hmm. bring forth the dominion power of light. Yes. If we can get light active in our worlds, mm -hmm. God can illuminate, bring revelation and everything can change. And we've heard it before, you never run at your giants with your mouth shut. That's right. I mean, That's you go right. at them with the word of God, with the sword of the spirit and you don't relent. And I love what she says, you know, she said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not like you're giggling through life every day. There's something much deeper than that. When, when, when life has crashed and you are at a moment and, and what did Oral say to her? This is a matter of life and death. Yeah, you're in those no situations. Right. This is a matter of life and death. It's intense, it's serious. It could seem fatal to some. Fear, anxiety is crippling and paralyzing. There is a deep fruit of the spirit, the joy of the Lord that will keep your head above water, that will keep you from sinking down into the depths of depression and that joy. Jay, when you get that joy and you can see up all of a sudden, there's hope. That's right. You can see hope. You can see a light at the end of the tunnel. So I don't know what is happening in your life today. I don't know what's happening with your kids or your family or your finances or with your health, but I do know that there is a good God who loves you like crazy. He's passionate about you and he wants you today to discover a deep inner strength and a joy and that joy will be your strength and then you will find so much hope today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.